This is Euronews Now. I'm Helena Humphrey and here are your top stories. Ukraine says it's recapturing yet more territory in its counteroffensive operation, with U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken saying the country has made significant progress. The coffin of Queen Elizabeth II is being transported from Edinburgh to London ahead of a state funeral next week. And the man known as the Butcher of Bosnia, Radko Mladic, is reportedly in poor health at a prison hospital facility in The Hague. Ukraine says it's reclaiming more territory in its counter-offensive, pushing all the way to the country's northeast border with Russia in some parts. Locals in Ukraine's recaptured towns and villages are sharing their stories of Russian troops retreating en masse. They started to escape in the evening. No, actually at 1.30 a.m. at night, the shelling began and they set fire to the places where they were staying. They were covering their tracks. In this way, we knew they were done. Yesterday morning there were Russians. This morning there are already Ukrainians. It's not enough to say I'm happy. I just don't have enough words to express myself. The Ukrainian resurgence is lifting morale in the country after months of little movement on the battlefield. Kyiv says its military has freed over 20 settlements in just 24 hours. But here in the city of Lehman, a gateway to bridges over Ukraine's Donetsk River, it's Russian-backed troops who are still in control and say they're holding firm in the face of the counter-offensive. The enemy's trying to break through, but we're holding the defence, says one. Another adds everything's fine, the district will not be handed over. Even amid Ukraine's optimism, the casualties keep mounting. Ukraine's presidential office says at least four civilians have been killed and 11 more wounded in a series of Russian attacks in nine regions of the country. Amid the stunning advances by Ukraine's military forces in the Kharkiv region, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken praised the morale of Kyiv's soldiers, adding that he was pleased to see U.S. military support having a positive effect on the battlefield. Uh, clearly, uh, we've seen significant progress by the, uh, uh, by the Ukrainians, uh, particularly uh, in, the, uh, in the Northeast, um, and uh, that uh, is a product, as I said, of the support we provided, but first and foremost, it's a product of the extraordinary courage and resilience of the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian people. Kyiv will likely increasingly dictate the location and nature of the major fighting, says the Institute for the Study of War, adding that Vladimir Putin retained the initiative when he pulled back from Kyiv and chose where the next fight would be. But now Ukraine has the initiative. Since the Russians began retreating from around Kyiv in late March and early April, Ukraine has liberated more than 60,000 square kilometers of its territory. And liberation of Kharkiv region is part of a longer pattern that points toward more Ukrainian gains and Russian losses. Now let's look at the south of Ukraine. Here, Ukrainian Southern Command says Ukraine liberated around 500 square kilometers of the region of Kherson, specifically the settlements of Visokopilia, Novovoznesensky, Bilohirka, Suhy, Stavok and Mirolubivka. Also, the Institute for the Study of War says satellite imagery of known Russian positions here in Kiselivka, this is about 15 kilometers northwest of Kherson city, shows that all but four Russian vehicles have departed from the previous forward positions. The UK Defence Ministry says in its intelligence update that Russia could take years to rebuild one of its most prestigious units after the retreat from the Kharkiv region, saying Russia's conventional force designed to counter NATO is now severely weakened. Now, the Kremlin says Russia's President Vladimir Putin is aware of the situation in the front lines and insists Russia will achieve its goals in Ukraine.
people have already started queuing in London to pay their last respects to Queen Elizabeth II when she lies in state from Wednesday at 5 p.m. Millions are expected to file past her coffin over the four days after it's brought to Westminster Hall near the Houses of Parliament. They said it might be seven miles, we don't know. And they might also stop at some point if it's overcrowding. So you wanted to be yeah, at the front? I just wanted to make sure I get the position and get the chance to pay my last respect. The security operation will be massive, a size not ever seen before. There'll be tight restrictions, people will only be allowed to carry one small bag and the new Metropolitan Police Chief says it should be a safe event. We're going to be putting thousands of officers into this um, because of the level of security required and the millions of people who want to pay their respects. As dawn broke across the city at Buckingham Palace Tuesday morning, other preparations were underway. Thousands of troops in ceremonial uniform from Wellington Barracks rehearsed for the funeral procession. These soldiers have performed many tributes to the Queen over the years. On this occasion, they'll be paying their last farewell. The death of Queen Elizabeth II has generated a huge amount of emotion in the United Kingdom. Hundreds of thousands of people are expected to pay their respects at her coffin this week in London. But amid the outpouring of grief, there have also been some dissenting voices about the British monarchy and about the accession of King Charles III. Before the Queen's coffin arrived in Edinburgh, a woman was arrested while carrying a sign that contained an expletive and the words, abolish the monarchy. She has since been revealed to be facing criminal charges for disorderly conduct. And in Edinburgh, another man was arrested for heckling the royal family as the Queen's coffin passed through the city. These are not isolated incidents. In Oxford in England, another man says that he was arrested while walking outside an event where King Charles was proclaimed. He says that he was walking past and simply said, who elected him? It has since been revealed by Thames Valley Police that this man has been de-arrested and that he is voluntarily working with police as part of their investigation. An investigation into whether what this man did classifies as threatening or abusive words or behaviour that would cause bystanders harassment, distress or alarm. And there have also been videos from outside the gates of Parliament where at least one person carrying a sign that reads, Not My King, has been escorted away by police but not arrested. And these images of law enforcement officers confronting anti-royalist protesters have generated an online debate in the UK about freedom of speech. Free speech campaigners say that the right to protest is not a gift from the state, but rather a fundamental right. Others saying that vocal, potentially harmful voices and protests are not appropriate in this period of national mourning. And this debate has gone right up to the UK Parliament with some lawmakers, including opposition Labour MP Zara Sultana, expressing their concerns online. Zara Sultana saying that no one should be arrested for just expressing Republican views. It is extraordinary and shocking that this needs saying. The Metropolitan Police have since released a statement in which they make it clear that the public absolutely has a right to protest and that they are making their officers aware of this. But at the centre of this debate is recent new laws in the UK that restrict the right to protest if it is deemed that an unjustifiably noisy protest may have a significant impact on others or might seriously disrupt an organisation's activities. The Met Police saying that the public absolutely have a right to protest, but this debate is likely to continue in the UK. And when questioned, a spokesperson for UK Prime Minister Liz Truss has said that this is a period of national mourning for the vast, vast majority of citizens. However, they also note that the fundamental right to protest remains a keystone in the UK's democracy. Plenty more coming up after a short break. Stay with us if you can.